Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Despite South Africa being in its worst ever electricity crisis, interest in a NERSA hearing to deliberate on a ministerial determination needed to add new electricity capacity was so low that the regulator was forced to reschedule. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the issue and the trend of waning interest in such hearings. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to this hearing that NERSA cancelled this week? In order to add new electricity capacity in South Africa, we have to be part of, it has to be part of the integrated resource plan. We know that took many years to update. It was eventually updated in 2019, and there's a review underway of that 2019 edition. And, but actually for the RPP office or anyone to actually add new capacity, there needs to be a ministerial determination that follows the RPP. And we've had several of those in the past, and those have sort of come to the end of the envelope. And we've already seen, for instance, with the attempt to double up uh, the solar and wind round for bid window six, the fact that there wasn't a ministerial determination in place meant they couldn't actually double up the round for solar PV. They only had sufficient allocation in the ministerial determinations that were published around 2020 to double the wind allocation. So instead of 5,200 megawatts, they're now procuring 4,200 megawatts. So it's very important that these ministerial determinations are in place. So we need those in place, but for a gazetted version that is legally uh, applicable, uh, it needs to get the concurrence of the regulator. Now this used to be a simple, seen as a tick box type exercise, but that all changed with after the nuclear determination when it was taken to court and the Western Cape High Court said uh, th those two concurrence, that concurrence that NERSA gave on that nuclear determination wasn't uh, legitimate because it, it, it was set aside because there was no public participation around NERSA giving its concurrence to the 9,600 megawatts that was in the 2010 version of the RP. We know that the current version doesn't have any nuclear in it. So that was a sort of a wake-up call to everyone and now NERSA has to go through a public consultation process and typically that involves public hearings. So that's the background. It's that in order for there to be any addition of new electricity generation capacity and for procurement programs to go ahead, it doesn't only have to be reflected in the integrated resource plan, it has to be, uh, there has to be a ministerial determination. And if you want to build something that's not in the integrated resource plan, you need a deviation from the RP, and that also needs to be concurred with by the, the energy regulator before it can be gazetted by the minister and before all the other processes can follow. Was such a poor response expected? Yes and no, because I think on the whole there's a need to procure additional electricity and we need these determinations uh, and we need them as soon as possible so that uh, there's no delays like we all, a crimping of rounds as we've seen with bid window 6. But on one of the determinations, there's a 3,000 megawatt gas to power um, determination. And there was initially confusion because that is already, there's already a ministerial determination for 3,000 megawatts of gas to power or gas stroke diesel that was delivered in 2020 by Gwede Montash, Minister Montash. And so there was confusion. Why, is, why are they re-canvassing that issue? Why is there a new concurrence needed? And NERSA belatedly put out an erratum to say, no, no, it doesn't relate to table, the Table 5 in the Integrated Resource Plan. This actually relates to a deviation that Eskom is seeking for a 3,000 megawatt gas to power plant in Richards Bay. So that immediately meant that I think there was going to be a triggering of some sort of public comment. Apparently written comments have been received, but uh, those would, ge would generally be ventilated and amplified during a, a public hearing which was supposed to take place this week. There were two days set aside for this. Why in particular that one is we know that the environmental groups are opposing that, um, that gas to power project in Richards Bay. Um, and they took, in fact, the issuance of the environmental authorization to court recently to have that reviewed and set aside. Now, the Gauteng High Court judge did uh, deliberate, and there was a judgment last week which basically said, no, it's not going to be reviewed and set aside. The, the environmental authorization stands. However, the judge was a bit critical of uh, the way the process had been handled 
and said there had been no translation uh, into Isi Zulu, and it had only been an Ingli uh, English uh, um, version of, of the environmental authorization. So there was an order associated with the fact that he would not review and set it aside. The judge said, no, you must go back to the publications widely circulated in the Riches Bay area, and at least publish this in, in Isi Zulu so that the community is fully aware. Um, but it seems that the environmental authorization for now stands. So you would have thought, well, this was the next level. Should NERSA be giving concurrence to this deviation from the integrated resource plan? And so therefore, uh, that was my expectation that there would have been some voices at this hearing to say, hang on a second, we don't believe this is, is the correct way to go. What will happen now? Well, NERSA uh, initially cancelled the hearings for this week and then put out a notice that they will try one more time uh, next week, Thursday and Friday, the 20th and the 21st, I think. And they've said two days again. But if there's no interest again, I think then it will be up to NERSA to decide to look at the whatever written comments they've received, probably also not many. Um, and uh, and if, they, if they are, by the 19th of October, notices that people want to make some sort of input. I think hearings will be held. Uh, I have a feeling interest is still going to be low, but probably some sort of hearing will take place and probably not across all both days. So, I mean, we'll have to wait and see, but it's back in the public domain. There was a feeling that maybe NERSA hadn't advertised this across its platforms as, as assertively as it should have. I battled to find it on the NERSA website. I don't think I did find it. I did see a newspaper advert. They have confirmed that it was in three national newspapers, but it wasn't so uh, obvious on their social media platform, which is where a lot of the activity takes place, nor on their website. So maybe a ball was dropped somewhere there. It's very much on their social media and their website now, this notice of the, the reschedule. So maybe they're just making a sure that uh, they can't be accused of trying to you know, do this under the radar uh, and they're they've doing it as transparently as possible and therefore new dates have been set. But we'll have to see. If there's no interest, well then NERSA will have to make a decision and I suppose needs to give this these concurrence as soon as possible so that we don't have delays in procurement. This seems to be part of a pattern of waning interest in NERSA hearings. Yes, it was quite noticeable in the latest uh, Eskom tariff application. You know, this was a, a massive application, 32% in a context where we know we have a cost of living crisis, inflation is well, well out of control, not, in, not just in South Africa, but globally we can see that the pressure this, is, uh, this uh, rising inflation is putting on things like um, wage negotiations. We've seen the Transnet strike having a very deleterious effect on the economy. We've got a public sector strike looming, and it's all about this sort of, uh, at least you need to give us sort of inflation-linked type wage increases. So for Eskom to be asking for a 32% tariff increase in that sort of environment, and for there to be so little pushback, so little interest, I'm sure there were uh, written comments um, and it, it does raise questions. What, what is going on here? Is it that nurses' credibility has been so shaken by the fact that every decision that they've made uh, that has been challenged just about in court has been found wanting? Is it that nurses is not communicating transparently enough with the public? Or is capacity within society to handle all these multiple f hearings and forums just not there anymore? You know, this takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. Uh, we know there's been skills flight from Eskom, <laughs> from Transnet. Has there been skills flight or fatigue um, from uh, in these sort of organizations that are standard bearers in terms of always being there, always being present? Uh, and or is there also just a cynicism that's set in? Well, this is how NERSA behaves. Uh, Eskom asks, bids high. NERSA cuts it in half and that's what we get and we'll trust that that process just carries on as, as you were. <laughs> so it, it could be a multiple factors. I'm very concerned that it might be related to the fact around nurses' credibility and a waning capacity of society to actually engage in what are very technical arguments 
and requires a certain level of skill and capacity. And does this reflect that uh, South African society, civil society, business uh, is lacking those skills? Uh, that's, uh, that would be an even larger concern. So I don't know the answer, but there's definite, it's definitely a trend um, and uh, one that I don't think is a welcome one. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.